Today on Great Places Seen, driving along historic U.S. Route 50 and its longest bridge. Enjoying a pristine state park. And a close encounter with a giant duck in the self-professed seafood capital of the world. Hop in, come along for the ride. No surprise, it's raining again. I have a new dash cam set up, sort of. I'm keeping a close eye on oil. Hmm. And I'm making a midsummer sanitization of my water lines. The trailer has been sitting in the heat likely incubating for a while, I really don't want to find out if I'm hauling a science experiment around. I'm skirting across the northern portion of the Capitol Beltway heading to Maryland's eastern shore. The majority of the ride will be on U.S. Route 50. This stretch between Washington, D.C., Annapolis, and the Bay Bridge, I've driven hundreds of times over 40 plus years. I'm used to the busy traffic here, even with the trailer in tow. Speaking of the Bay Bridge, it crosses the Chesapeake for just over 4 miles or 7 kilometers. A lot of people are afraid of it so much that you may request a driver to take you and your vehicle across. My parents lived for 36 years on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay and I've made so many trips over this bridge it just doesn't faze me, even on my first crossing with a trailer. This is the original two-lane span, which opened in 1952. The second parallel three-lane span was added in 1973. The lanes may be configured in any direction needed for traffic flow or maintenance, and over the years I've driven both spans in each direction. I think it's a lot of fun, especially now with a 360-degree camera. Well, the weather isn't great, but the gray sky somehow complements the battleship gray paint and the water 354 feet below. That's 107 meters for our international friends. When it opened, it was the world's longest overwater steel structure. Hopefully the weather will be nicer on the return trip and we'll enjoy some more of this unique bridge's history. Maryland Public Television produced a very nice one-hour documentary about the Bay Bridge years ago. Really fascinating. Look it up if you like. the dash cam. Yeah, it's just a GoPro and a suction cup mount, but somehow I've got the leveling setting messed up. Sorry about that. Although sometimes it kind of looks cool. Maybe. I thought I'd stop for a quick fill up to top off the tank. You know, this has to be the slowest pump I've ever seen. The station tank must be really low.
As Route 50 heads south toward Salisbury, and eventually to its eastern terminus at Ocean City, it crosses corn and soybean fields and flat marshy terrain with several rivers and inlets along this portion of the Delmarva Peninsula. At Salisbury, U.S. Route 13 South brings us closer to Pocomoke City, dubbed the friendliest town on Maryland's eastern shore, and to Pocomoke River State Park. Don't let this sleepy area fool you. It's home to defense contractors, aerospace engineering and plastics fabrication, and it's in the neighborhood of NASA's Wallops Island Flight Facility. Time to flush and fill the water tank, and just in time for the sun to break through the late afternoon clouds. To be sure, there are other campers here, but behind this site, it's wide open with beautiful tall pine trees. For the late summer when campgrounds are often full, this is a special treat. It's very quiet. The bathhouse isn't too far away, very clean like the campground itself. Good morning. The early light is amazing here. 
Even with a thick canopy overhead, the sun slices through and lights up the ground. The colors just pop, and it feels like no one else is around. A cup of coffee and some oatmeal, often the simplest meals are the most enjoyable. As beautiful as it is, we're on a mission. Time to hit the road a short distance south to Crisfield. Maryland's southernmost incorporated city calls itself the seafood capital of the world. But this weekend it's home to the world's largest rubber duck. It seems every sign here has a crab on it. Almost 400 years ago, watermen came to Summer's Cove. 200 years later, a huge oyster bed was discovered nearby. John W. Crisfield brought a railroad in, and seafood quickly was shipped to nearby urban areas, bringing prosperity to this quiet fishing town. City residents often say downtown is literally built on top of oyster shells. A decline in the health of the bay led Crisfield to tough times, along with many other eastern shore towns like it. Today, tourism is the big draw, but with years of conservation efforts, fresh seafood, especially blue crabs, continue to attract hungry visitors. Today, it's the world's largest rubber duck attracting interest to Crisfield. You may have seen it over the years floating in some famous waters around the world. Known as Mama Duck, this is its first visit to Maryland, although this time it will be inflated on land. Mama Duck is 60 feet tall. That's about 20 meters high or a six-story building. This is no lightweight attraction, weighing in at over 15 tons. Yeah, a lot of air goes in, but in about an hour, Mama Duck will be standing tall. In 2007, Dutch artist Florentin Hoffman began a series of several giant floating ducks, recreated locally as temporary public art. The measurements vary a bit as a result, but are close to Mama Duck's dimensions. The giant ducks have been in the Netherlands, France, Belgium, Japan, Australia, China, South Korea. The first U.S. visit was in Pittsburgh in 2013 when an estimated one million people came to see it. The duck is made of more than 200 pieces of PVC, all connected by hand with sewing machines. There's an 
electric fan inside so it can be inflated in any weather. And the fan circulates air to maintain the shape of the duct. Sixteen ropes hold it in place either on land or in the water. A lot of people here are definitely in a ducky mood. Of course, the duck generates commerce, but there's some freebies too. That's the world's largest rubber duck. And most everyone wants a picture. I mean, how often are you standing near a giant duck? That's the closest Mama Duck is getting to water today. These days, it's getting so you can't tell the difference between a YouTuber and a local news reporter. Well, he does have a station vehicle. Hmm, and there's a helicopter too. No, I don't have those. Not yet, anyway. There's even a duck radio station here. Hey, let's give a nod to local community radio too. Do you think this might be confusing real birds? There are other big animals here as well. Time to scout out some lunch. 
And here's some folks getting ready to go out on a three-hour tour. Let's hope their trip ends up a little better. My father had boats in Annapolis, and growing up, I'd look for crabs around the dock. Yep, there's one. As a kid, I used to go along the pilings and get them with a net. <laughs> yeah, we're doing You can see the duck from just about everywhere. Local birds could care less about their big yellow visitor. Some restaurants along Main Street are closed. The few that are open are full. So it's down the road a couple miles to a local favorite. After a busy morning, it's good to have some chill time back at the campground. It's also a great time to check out the river. Oh, look, you can rent a cabin here. There's a big party pavilion. And this is a great pier. Pocomoke is the American Indian name for the river, meaning black water. Hmm, how prophetic. Huh, what do you think is in this water? Still, the late afternoon light is the best time to see the river's deep blue against the vibrant green trees and water lilies lining both shores.
Okomoke is the easternmost river flowing into the Chesapeake Bay, 66 miles from Delaware, where its upper reaches run through mostly inaccessible wetlands called the Great Cypress Swamp. Well, that sure conjures up interesting images. You get some glimpses of the river from the campground. There's really no camping water view to speak of here. Wow, our neighbor seems to have collected an unusually large amount of firewood for just a two-day stay. Mine is a simple small fire enough to cook some corn and hamburgers. These massive trees block any sunset but you get a sense of it from the clouds above. Next time on Great Places Seen, it's a drive in the other direction to Assateague National Seashore in search of the famous wild ponies. <laughs>